Herb was right on with what he said. See, when you say that, it's incongruent with what you just did. Yeah. So there's a part of you that knows how to reach out, that wants to reach out, that just did. Some reason you don't listen to that part. So here's the question. What made you listen to that part right now versus when you don't? What's the difference with now and other times? What did you do differently? I forced myself. I forced myself. Okay, then. So well, but no, but you expected no, something too. You expected something. What? Good question. How did you force yourself? What did you do to force yourself? Because I'm in such pain right now. Uh, but it's that vulnerability. You've been, You've been in pain at other times. That's not the determining factor. How did you force yourself right now? What was it that was different between now and other times? I'll think about that. Well, you have to, because that's the difference. See, whatever whatever was different now, what, or whatever you did differently, I really need to say it that way. You made a choice right now to reach out. Whatever you did to get to that choice, you need to understand, yeah. because that can be replicated. Period. Yeah, and it was a hugely courageous and innovative uh, reach out. There's 200 people on this public call, and you know none of them. And here you are being, being so vulnerable, first out of the shoot. Right. Friends, let me be very clear. There's no difference in the steps. All of 12-step programs have the same 12 steps. The addiction differs. The issue of the problem in addiction process or substance, those differ. But the process of the steps are the same. Um, you're in ACOA. They have wonderful literature. Get a sponsor. And I talk about this a lot is that our experience, and I can say mine, and Herb can speak to his here in a minute, I have used psychotherapy throughout my recovery to complement it. Yep. For me, the experience in going to psychotherapy, going to workshops that Herb and I attend together, I'm not just the ones that we do. We also attend the ones we do, but we gone to see Father Richard Rohr together, Jim Finley together. Mm -hmm. You know, we seek, we go out, we seek other things. I've gone to many workshops with different psychotherapists and learned mm -hmm. all of that, you know, you know, contribute, right? It's synergistic. So don't limit yourself here. I okay. know in, 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 in Antwerp, there's a very, very active Gestalt Therapy Institute. Mm -hmm. And I would, I, I found in, for me, Gestalt Therapy to be very, very in sync with the 12 steps. Mm -hmm. The principles of it seem like glove in hand to me. Mm -hmm. So please reach out. We, Herb and I did a lot of workshops outside of this. He went to a, a, a program, I think it was Life, um, Life Spring. Life Spring, you went to that. Yeah. I went to a bunch of different workshops on my own. All of that stuff contributed to where we are today. Right. So we we're mm -hmm. not just 12-step babies. I mean, you know that from mm -hmm. my background because I'm a psychologist, but we have both benefited tremendously by input from all kinds of sources. He mm -hmm. read an avid reader of Thomas Merton, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. right. Of, of all kinds of spiritual. So we take in, you know, we're junkies. We'll take in anything that's going to be of value. But, but, but you do need to focus and not spread your energies out too much at the beginning. So yes. you do, you need a teacher. You need a guide. You need a step guide. No, no, you cannot do, you cannot do this on your own. Well, Neither no, Dr. No. Berger or nor myself could have, as, as smart as we are, and as educated as we are, we could not have done this on our own.
Yeah. And listen, first, I would say stop asking other people. Mm -hmm. Much noise in your head. So, I know you're doing it because you're anxious, but, but calm your anxiety in a different way. See, your anxiety isn't going to help you by being told what to do. That's creating your anxiety is you're not sure what to do and getting more information from other people about what to do is not going to help you connect to yourself so sit with your discomfort bring it into meditation the way that herb does it mm -hmm. Herb, maybe you can comment on that because that could help her a lot right now yeah I, consciousness of course is the key here i couldn't be conscious until i finished the ninth step but I was a lot more conscious once I finished the fifth step. Okay. Once, I, And so that's where you're at. Finish your fifth step. Work with your sponsor step guide. Do not make any substantial decisions and stop listening to other people. You want to really learn to listen to yourself. And that's what Dr. Berger was suggesting with meditation is you're listening to and beginning to learn and beginning to trust and beginning to hear your own voice, let alone the potential whisper of a spirit other than yourself. And, and you will learn over time, but this is not, you don't make a tulip grow by pulling on it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good. That's it. And, and, and finish, finish your fifth, six and seven will go within two hours of your finishing your fifth step, if you do it the way I suggest. And and be patient. You gotta listen to yourself. You can do it. You just don't create the space to do it. And the way you do it is you try things on and you see what you experience with it. You can't do that if you check in with everybody else. So you try something in your relationship, you see what happens. If it's not right, you go back and talk about it. And then you try to I am a perfectionist. When you call out the perfectionist, it's wanting to make sure that you're doing the right thing, that if I'm going to end the relationship, am I really ending the relationship in the right way? Or am I doing it? Oh, right? look, stop it. Stop it. Stop all the questions. You're so young. You've got plenty of time. It Six months seems like forever. But relative to the age that you're probably going to live, it's nothing. Take six months and breathe and right, stop again. asking questions, even yes. of yourself. So do it again. I need to be perfect to be okay. Say that. I need to be perfect to be okay. Uh, Say the opposite. I don't need to be perfect to be okay. I do not need to be perfect to be okay. Say the first one again. I need to be perfect to be okay. Second one. I do not need to be perfect to be okay. What feels more true for you? What feels more true? The second one, when I can be in my body. Well, are you in your body now? Yes. All right. There, yeah. So you know. So you know. You. See, if you take the space to listen to yourself, you can, you can, you can find your way through this. <sighs> Thanks, guys. And, and they speak and the truth. Please. <laughs> Finish, finish your fourth step, do your fifth step. There's no rush, but don't delay. In fact, if you need to set a date for your fifth step as the target, not a deadline, Miss Perfectionist. Yes. Not a deadline, but a target. It's, it's flexible, but set it so that you have a roadmap. I was talking to this guy about worried about his image and his ego. So you got to look at what your fear is about reaching out. You've said it a few times that people may reject you. People may not be responsive to you, but that's not the problem. It's the meaning you give to it. Mm -hmm. If you conclude from that, therefore I'm not worthy. That's where you're creating your trouble, girl, is that okay. you are attaching a meaning to an experience that's based on your low self-esteem. That's not based on reality. Yes, what sir. other people do is not about you. It's about them. If they don't reach out, it says nothing about you. Yeah. Just where they're at in their life for whatever reason. Yeah. 
So when you base what you're doing on what other people are going to do, guess what you're doing? You're alienating yourself from yourself. That's what's creating the loneliness. Loneliness is self-alienation, not alienation from others. Yeah. Because you can be alone and be okay if you're not alienated from yourself. But if you're alienated from yourself, then you're not in good company. Thank you. The spiritual axioms in the rooms, it has been ever since I've been there, almost 40 years, is acts contrary to your will. Acts contrary to what you are inclined to do. Now, Obviously, you need to use common sense with that. But your habit, because of what Dr. Berger was saying of the low self-esteem, is to stay safe. And you're going to go to a meeting and begin to reach out, even though you don't want to, you don't feel like, and you don't feel safe doing it, you're going to do it anyhow. I recommend it. In fact, it was part of the innovation of the workshops. The people came to the workshop with different issues when they came to the fourth step. And rather than doing resentments, I suggested that they do grief or regret or mm -hmm. depression or some other word, whatever the relevant word is for their suffering, use that word and just uh, replace resentment with that word and, and apply the instructions that way. Now, you'll need help to navigate it that creatively, but get help to do that. But absolutely, use, use the word that captures your personal source of suffering at this present time. recommended timeline in the big book now you've done the steps uh, you're about to finish them the second time have you done them out of the big book of alcoholics anonymous i did da how and doing the yellow book in acoa and so i'm feeling i need to do the big book oh, wonderful resources yeah. i suggest that you do it out of the big book with somebody who knows what they're doing not everybody who says they've done the steps out of the big book has actually done it with any depth. And I don't want to judge them, but I do evaluate. <laughs> and uh, so find somebody who is a mechanic with the big book and the steps out of the big book and go through the big book. Again, using the word for step one, that is your primary issue, because the steps are not about the addiction, the particular addiction. They're about addressing the addiction in the beginning and then addressing the spiritual malady, which is the problem, and finding a power other than yourself and an effective connection to that power, which will solve all your problems. My sponsor in ACOA has been in the rooms for 30 years, has done loads of work, Big book, other work, very deep work, and I feel blessed. She's actually an American. For anyone listening here, I found a sponsor on Zoom in America who I've never seen face to face. I'm having a profound healing experience with this, so you do not need to be in the same country to get healing. What I wanted to question was, you know, someone said, has said to me, the credits don't cross between fellowships. So I have, obviously I don't need to go into the stories at the issues that are coming up. They seem to be coming up deeper. There are issues in relation to my relationship to money, the meaning of money, all that stuff. It's the issues that I thought I'd healed in DA doing the steps that way. They're all coming up. Even more amplified in ACOA and I'm in step 8. That's probably not a shock.
But as my sponsor says, oh, don't worry, we'll deal with it in ACOA because it's a different type of healing. And I guess I query that, I want to believe her, but I wonder what, you just said something which says it sounds like you can have profound transformational healing across all of ourselves because at the core, it's myself that is in need of healing. Is that right? To believe that. Yes, but I think that there is a benefit to the different fellowships. Debtors Anonymous has a kiss and cousin under Earners Anonymous. You right, yeah. The protocols and the recommendations for around the problem and the addiction are different and yeah. very precise, very different than you'll hear in AA or NA or CA. All right. That's why I say the addiction is different. So you do need to be in a fellowship that is relevant to your particular priority, priority addiction. I'm not a believer in multiple, many multiple programs. Obviously, one or two or three might be necessary depending on the characteristic, but none of them are going to work unless you treat unmanageability, the spiritual malady. And then, quite frankly, as the book suggests, the big book on page 64, once you treat the unmanageability, the spiritual malady, everything else should fall in place. Is Try doing the steps out of the big book attempting to also manage your other issues with the sponsors that you have or with new sponsors, but find somebody who will guide you through the big book, deeply going through the steps out of the big book, assuming that they have the broad and deep experiences that I'm assuming they would have. That's a dynamic. That's a family dynamic. Once somebody changes in a family dynamic, the entire dynamic changes. And some people who got used to the other will not like the new. Then she has a decision. Does she want to be a phony or does she want to be real? And, and then be kind and tolerant about dealing with people who need to adjust. Don't make their problems her problems. I don't want to be cold about it. I know Dr. Berger would have lots more fuzzy and good suggestions from his psychology. I don't come from that perspective. <laughs> sober I was four years sober he said you have a lot of information but you have no transformation because it hasn't been filtered through your heart to your feet in terms of the translation into action and that's because I hadn't had any experience with it uh, during that journey I had an experience which changed my heart which changed my feet or changed my feet and then changed my heart there was both both directions and then it was a process of three different times over the next 10, 12 years that I did the steps with a mechanic, meaning somebody who really knew the 12 step process out of the big book and helped me apply the steps. And I had different progressive awakenings as I became more and more conscious. Doing this work, you become more conscious and doing this work, you become more conscious and doing this work, you become more conscious like that dimmers. At three and a half years of sobriety, from my experience, I felt safe keeping things on an intellectual level. I didn't know I had blocked my feelings for decades. So it was safer for me to keep it intellectual. But until I could start feeling and being vulnerable, and understanding that I didn't have to be perfect, um, that I was okay, that I could pause, that I could turn to a higher power for help. I didn't know any of that stuff before, and until that sunk in, I didn't need to keep it at an intellectual level, because I felt, 
I felt safe enough to explore myself. Right around three and a half, four years. Yeah. What yeah. happened to me? I was four years sober. My senses, I had thought out sufficiently where I could, in fact, now process in an effective way uh, some deeper uh, information and have an experience with it. So, yeah, I, uh, it, that would be parallel to my experience. <laughs>